Hello and welcome to another episode of Interactive Biology TV, where we're making biology fun. My name is Leslie Samuel, and in this episode, episode 66, I'm going to be talking about the anatomy and functions of the parietal lobe. So let's get right into it. The parietal lobe, as you can see here, is this region right here. And um, we're starting at the central solstice. It goes down. And on the inferior end over here, we have the lateral cerebral fissure. And posteriorly, we have the parietal occipital fissure that separates the parietal lobe from the occipital lobe. Now, the parietal lobe is primarily involved in perceiving and processing somatosensory events. So we're talking about things like touch and temperature and uh, body position and pain. So the term that we use for body position is proprioception. And the term that we use for pain is nociception. Okay, so proprioception and nociception, those are also involved in the processing of the parietal lobe. All right, let's go a little more into that. Uh, here we have on the most anterior end, we have the post-central gyrus. And of course, the post-central gyrus is going to be just posterior to the central sulcus. And then we have the post-central sulcus on the posterior end of that gyrus. And the function of that gyrus is basically receiving somesthetic information. So we're talking about uh, kinesthetic and tactile information. Kinesthetic meaning body movements and tactile would be touch. So that information comes in and it goes to the post-central gyrus and there's some processing that happens there for us to uh, be able to recognize movements of body and uh, when we get touched we can feel that because of some of the processing that's happening right here. Now of course the left half of the brain so the left post-central gyrus is going to be getting information from the right side of the body and the right post-central gyrus is going to be receiving information from the left side of the body. Not only that, but it's also what we call somatotopically. So let me write that here. Somatotopically organized. What that means is specific parts of the post-central gyrus are going to receive information from specific parts of the body. And for example, if we are looking at the face and head, the information that's coming from the face and the head are going to be processed in the most inferior parts of the post-central gyrus. And as we go more superior... Uh, we're going to be starting to get input from the upper limbs. And if we go more medial, so we're going more towards the center of the brain, um, we're going to be getting information from the lower limbs. So it's somatotopically organized. So specific parts of this gyrus gets information from specific parts of the body. And you're going to see that a lot in the different parts of the brain. So Post-central gyrus, we spoke about that. And then we have the superior parietal lobule. And, of course, that's going to be superior. And that what that does is it integrates sensory and motor functions. And then we have the inferior parietal lobule. And you can see that the superior and inferior parietal lobules are separated by this intraparietal sulcus intraparietal. Intra means it's inside or in between parietal, the parietal lobe. So that's the intraparietal sulcus. And in the inferior parietal lobule, you see here we have the supramarginal gyrus and the angular gyrus. And these two gyri receive input from the auditory and visual cortices. And, of course, it's processing auditory information and visual information. So in order for us to see and hear, we're getting information 
through this supramarginal gyrus and the angular gyrus. Then we have a specialized area that's called the Wernicke's area, and I know it looks different than I'm pronouncing it, but that's the German pronunciation. And what that helps us do is understand spoken language. So someone is speaking to you and you need to understand what they are saying. There's processing that's happening in the Wernicke's area. And of course, uh, in some cases, it's diff more difficult to understand some people than others. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Okay, let's continue. So um, if there's damage to this area, so if we have like lesions in the Wernicke's area, uh, that can result in Wernicke's aphasia. And what that is, is impairment of comprehension and repetition. So you have a hard time understanding spoken language because of the damage in this area area. That's pretty much it. That's all I want to cover for this episode. As usual, I want to invite you to visit the website at interactive-biology.com for more biology videos. Uh, you can also get the transcripts of every video that I have posted here, all of the interactive biology TV videos, and a bunch of other resources to help make biology fun. That's pretty much it for now, and I'll see you on the next one.